we managed to get hold of um, Nathan and drag him away from his strategic work to ask him a few questions. So Nathan, let's get back to basics. What is a strategic review and why are we doing it? A strategic review is a top-level look at the uh, direction and vision and purpose of an organisation. So it's not just uh, specific for charities, but all organisations usually undertake a review. Uh, these reviews look out about 25 years, um, and it's very normal that at each five-year interval you take, take stock and make sure that you're still on track. Um, so why are we doing one and why are we doing it now? Um, the charity has reached 100 years now. Um, there have been some pivotal uh, changes in the charity over those 100 years, but um, there hasn't really been that, uh, that time taken to step back and look at um, the number of uh, potential members out there. So we are supporting a small but very important group of blind veterans, uh, about 4,000. Um, but there is potentially 59,000 out in the UK. So this review is looking at how we can best position ourselves to support as many blind veterans as possible, looking out over that next five years. That's fine. Thanks. It seems to be taking an awfully long time. Why? Um, strategic reviews do take time. Uh, we need to get it right. We need to, um, we need to uh, make sure that we are taking the right decisions and we've got the right evidence to inform those decisions. So we have three, um, three decision points over the next year. Uh, we've got June, September and, and March. Uh, those are points when the trustees need to make um, decisions around the future of this charity. So it, it's not a, a quick win. It's not mm. something that we can just do and um, suddenly in six months time be supporting 59,000 members. Right. You say there's three main times that we're going to support uh, that, we, that, that, that the trustees are going to make decisions. Can you kind of elaborate what those three points are, what's going to happen at each of them? Uh, certainly. Um, Nick has recently done his general staff meetings yep. uh, and there he presented three broad ideas. Um, mm -hmm. Those that were focused around uh, an organisation that is quite centre focused, uh, one that's quite region focused and one that's um, very much set in a community. Uh, so they're three what we call operating model options. They're yeah. three options to take forward. Um, what the strategy team now need to do between, um, between now and June is to um, better understand what, what those look like. Uh, sort of get under the skin of each of those three options um, mm. in terms of costings, uh, potential numbers of centres and regions and communities uh, and the, the staffing resource we need to support that. Um, so that will go to the trustees in June and they'll pick, hopefully, one, one of those three options. Mm. And then we can spend much more time understanding how we do sports and recreation, uh, psychological support, employment support, all, right. these, all those member needs, how we can do that uh, for September. And then by April we need to have a plan in place. Okay. Um, it'll be quite broad, but it'll be a plan that sets us on that five-year journey. Thanks. So, okay, what's everyone supposed to do in the meantime then? Is there anything they can do to help the staff? Um, absolutely. I think if people have ideas, views, comments, uh, complaints, um, then they can feed those in uh, to either strategic.review uh, at blindveterans.org email um, or pick up the phone, uh, speak to myself or speak to anyone in the secretariat or speak to you. Um, equally, there is a strategy project team where all of the department heads, centre managers and regional managers uh, attend. That's really sort of the heart of the strategic team. Um, they are there to consult with staff to get their views and bring that into the project um, and likewise then feed the outcomes of that back to staff. Now, Nick mentions a regional footprint. We hear this word regional footprint. What is a regional footprint? Um, it's almost what it says on the tin. It's, you know, it's a region. That could be a county, it could be a uh, local authority area or a group of local authority areas. It, it's there to capture a geographical um, boundary where we might um, focus our efforts. Is that because at the moment we're, we're not getting out to members in the regions enough? Um, it's not that we're not getting out there enough now, it's that with the growing membership, growth mm. is, is at, the high, you know, at the top of our agenda, uh, that growing membership are also an ageing one. Um, mm. So there is um, less ability for members to get into the centres. So we need to be able to offer a variety of options to our members, whether they want support in a centre or more local to them, mm. or even in their home. Okay, so we're not stopping what we're doing in the centres, it's just expend expending that further out. Absolutely, it's replicating what we do in the centres out in the field, out in the area where members can best access it. 
So the this the the future or where we're going then, it does it does it mean that we won't have centres anymore? Uh, on the contrary, um, we definitely need centres. We need we need to give members um, a number of different ways of accessing support. Mm -hmm. um, we have three thriving centres as it is, um, and they are almost all at capacity. Uh, so we need to explore how we can best meet those needs. And it may be that we have other services that look like centres. It could be day centres, residential centres, or collaboration with other organisations mm -hmm. such as the British Legion pop-in centres um, to best meet those needs. Okay, thank you. Some people are worried about merging. We, we hear this word um, merging with other charities and that that will mean that they will lose their jobs. What, what would you have to say about that? Um, I think there is absolutely no, no plan in place to do any merging. Um, merging would imply that we were going to be absorbed or absorb another organisation into us. Um, what we are, however, looking at doing is collaborating and partnering. They're the two terms mm. we're using. Okay. That's working with other organisations to deliver services to meet those needs that we might not be the best at delivering. Why would we want to uh, try and excel in something that somebody else is already doing brilliantly? Yeah, that makes sense. That's good. Now, we're going to d double the number of members. I mean, we've got a stretch target of 8,000 new members. Um, how we, you know, that must mean that we're going to have to raise more money. Um, so are we going to end up with more fundraisers? Um, I think um, the fundraising element is, is secondary at this point. We best first need to understand what we need to do to support our members mm -hmm. and then look at the service, the enabling services, how much money we need, um, what sort of head office you need to support that, uh, marketing, communications, etc. Um, but we, we want fundraising to be local, we want it to be regional, but we also recognise that the majority of fundraising is done at a national level. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in the next, next couple of months we need to better understand how we will fund this new model. Okay, thank you. Staff are pretty stressed though at the moment um, and we seem to be taking on an awful lot more senior staff uh, whereas at the front level we've got you know staff who are desperately trying to meet the demands of the job. Um, will we be taking more staff on a, a, in the front line? Well, I think uh, two points if I may. Um, firstly on the, on the stretched services I fully recognise that services mm. uh, are stretched, centres are really busy, the field are busy, head office is busy and we are as a charity looking at ways that we can do things differently, becoming more efficient and then when we can demonstrate we are as efficient as we can be then that gives us good reason to ask the senior leadership team um, for more resource um, but it wouldn't be a sensible idea to throw a load of resource into the field at the moment mm. um, until we best know what the structure is going to be. Um, but secondly I think the senior, the senior leaders, I think that there has been a uh, a changeover and, and a, a small increase in the senior management, but perfect, for perfect good reason. I think we're already seeing in spades the work of our uh, two new policy heads in head office that are starting to shape uh, policies, and, uh, ensuring uh, consistency and coherence across the charity, and they're also shaping the strategy. And of course, you know, if there is a good business case, I, I know that we've just taken on, for example, uh, a new welfare support officer in Scotland. So clearly where there is a stress and a need, we, we do meet that demand, don't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Agile working. What's agile working, Nathan? Agile working. Uh, a great term, and it could be perceived in many ways, but f for us um, and for our chief executive, agility and agile working is all about um, the one team. It's about us working together, breaking down the silos as mm -hmm. a charity and, and working across departments, um, being dynamic, um, trying things, coming up with different ways, better ways of doing things. It's, it's, taking, um, it's taking the norm and, and sort of throwing that out a little bit. And you know, if, there's, if there's better ways of doing it, then let's, let's grip it and, okay. and not sort of resist So it's, it's, it's not about people's sort of you know, one minute hoovering a corridor and then suddenly dropping that and rushing off and making a mosaic in the craft room then? No, but yeah. what it is about is, is a cleaner or a housekeeping assistant or a middle manager or your transport manager, you know, they, they will all have brilliant minds that they can bring together to deliver and just, something. And just do that. That's great, thank you. We've got three centres um, and each one of them is very, very different. How can we maintain quality if we keep opening new centres or new regional offices or new community centres or, or, or whichever model we go for, how are we going to maintain that quality? 
quality is paramount to the whole of the strategic review. That's, that's one thing the trustees have been mm -hmm. very clear, is that um, any change, any um, evolvement of this charity, um, quality cannot be compromised. Mm -hmm. And we're building that into our strategic review, so we will certainly not be looking at um, rolling out any new um, operating model that's not financially sustainable, but one that's going to compromise the needs being met of our members. Okay, thank you. And finally, meeting the holistic needs of our members. Holistic. What does that mean? Holistic. Yeah. Everything. It's Everything. meeting the whole need, all of the needs. Um, that doesn't mean necessarily we'll meet those needs directly. It could be that we, we collaborate, we partner, as I mentioned earlier, with other organisations, but members have um, have individual uh, and sometimes complex needs throughout their whole journey of, of, of visual impairment. Um, and we need to be able to support all of those needs. And we, will we be doing that? Or are you saying we, or will we we'll collaborate? Absolutely, another? yeah. There, there'll be a need to collaborate. We, we can't be the best of everything. Um, we are brilliant at everything that we do, but there are some things like psychological support, counselling, um, education, and, and training for carers are, are things that we do in, in, in in certain pockets of the organisation, but actually there may be other organisations that we could work with that do that brilliantly already. Okay. Thank you very much, Nathan. And Thank as you. you said at the beginning, if people have got a question and you want to talk to Nathan or you want to ask him something, pick up the phone or alternatively you can email uh, Nathan or do the, is it strategic.review? At blindveterans.org. Blind Thanks ever so much. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan.